My name is Pastor Chandler, and I'm the pastor of Jackson Street United Methodist Church. I want to say welcome. I want to welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want to welcome you to virtual worship. It is worship, um, just the same. It's not what we're accustomed to or uh, what we're used to, and we hope one day that we'll be able uh, to fellowship and, and come together as we did in the past, but, but now... Um, I want to say that God is here with us in this virtual worship. Uh, he's with you where you are, in your homes and, and on your handheld devices. I want to say thank you for allowing me to be a part of this experience. Let us welcome God now into this experience because he wants to worship with us. He wants to be with us and fellowship with us and let his presence be felt. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship. We thank you, Lord God, that, that in the midst of all that we go through and all of the changes that this world takes us through, uh, you are always with us. Uh, your strength abides with us. Your grace, oh God, it gives us opportunity. It is sufficient for us. God, we thank you for your mercy and, and the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price that we could not pay for ourselves. So this morning, Lord God, we want to say thank you. We want to say, God, welcome into this place. Welcome, Lord God, into this broken vessel. While you're here, God, we want to praise your name. We want to exalt you. We, we want to lift you up, oh God. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Let us hear a word from you that will bring new life. God, we know you're able. We know you will. We know you are with us even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now that we know that God is here with us, now that we know that this is a time of worship, now that we, 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 we are not going to, to make excuses uh, for worship time or spending time with God or listening for what God has to say, let us have a great time together this morning. Um, send me a notification. Uh, hit like. Share it with a friend. Invite a, a family member to, to get up with you and Come and, and, and let us worship together uh, the way that, that's, that's made available to us virtually and with our family and with those who maybe won't get up with you and go to church, but they might get up with you and come and, and, and sit in front of your handheld device or sit in front of your television or, or take one of your earbuds and they listen through one and you listen. Just be, be creative. And while we're worshiping, I want you to know that, that, that you can say amen. If the word spikes you to jump and shout or, or wave your hand, wave your hand, jump, shout, run around your house. Remember, nobody can see you but God. So you don't have to worry about people looking at what you got on and you don't have to worry about your jewelry falling off or losing one of your shoes. This is really an opportunity for liberty and freedom in worship. And uh, The Bible declares where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I want you to be free this morning, free to worship. With me and everyone else who is with you, I want to say welcome to Jackson Street United Methodist Church. I'm glad that you're joining us today, and, and, and we're together even though this pandemic has us apart. And that's the power of God. That's the amazing work of the Lord in our lives and in the midst of everything that's going on. God is still able. Isn't that wonderful? That is such great news. So, so let us move now in, in, into our message. We have been talking about helping, healing, and hospitality, my Lord. And we are still uh, um, um, looking at the helping part because uh, it, it, is, it is a very 
intricate part of, of what we do or what we should be doing as a church. Mm, it is. And, and it's, 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 it's not so much the helping of other people that I'm speaking of, but this is more of a helping of the body of Christ to understand its strength to understand its importance, to understand that, that God is working through us, to understand that, that we are ambassadors for the Lord. And, and, and when people see us or when they hear us, they should see God. They should hear a word from the Lord. When they see our actions or, or, or when we go to work, uh, 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 reaching out to them or evangelizing them or sharing our faith with them, there should be an explosion. There, there should be this transition or, or this transformation that's initiated in their lives. And, and, and so, so we're not just helping them, hallelujah somebody, but this is more about helping us realize just how significant we are in the life of Christ, how significant we are in the life of the church, how significant we are in our communities and in this world that we live in. The enemy would have us to think that we have no power, but I came to tell you today that the devil is a liar. Hmm. He doesn't want you to know. Hallelujah, that if you need help, there is help for you. God God has all the help that we need. And, and I declare unto you, uh, because of the state of the church now and how the enemy is coming against the church and uh, attacking us from all sides, we need all the help we can get. And so this message, I'm hoping, uh, uh, will do just that. I'm hoping that God is using me to, 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 to bring in the help that we need. Understanding. And all about getting, get understanding. It, it, it's okay to shout and, and, and jump around. It's, it's okay to, to be slain in the spirit. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it's okay. Uh, but but at, at the end of the day, uh, we need to understand. We need to have an understanding. Uh, God wants us uh, uh, to be knowledgeable of what just happened or, or what is going to happen or, or how he's using us. And so, so, so with this helping uh, we understand that, 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 that helping requires taking risks. Uh, we understand it, it requires us to be faithful. We understand that it requires diligence. We understand um, that there's a price for doing nothing. We, 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 we've talked about that, and, and we understand under helping that, that we're not helping things if we're not diligent. <laughs> we're not helping anybody or even ourselves if we're not faithful. We're not really helping anybody or helping anything if we're not willing to take a risk. And, and, and the risk of doing nothing will separate us or, or cause us to be pushed aside in that judgment day. And, and we don't want to be set aside. We don't want to be cast into utter darkness. We, we, we want to be able to live out eternity with the Lord. So we want to hear him say, well done. That's what we want to hear. And that's what we want to work towards. And, and that's what we've been talking about when we talked about the parables uh, of the master who went away and, and, and said, but I'll be returning. And he left gifts and talents and, and, and then he returned. And, and so that's a demonstration that one day we will have to answer. One day there will be a judgment. The Bible declares that, that, that after death, comes the judgment. And so, so we need to be prepared for that. We need to be prepared to answer, as Paul says, uh, uh, for, for answer uh, 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 and give explanation for our faith and, and for why we did or did not do the things that we were supposed to do. And so, so then we move to service and, and service requires action, helping or doing work uh, for someone, an act of assistance. <laughs> My Lord, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, we talked about service. And, and, and today, we're going to talk about neighbor. Neighbor, uh, because uh, the Pharisees asked the question in the parable when, 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 when Jesus reminded them, as I, I hope to remind you, um, um, that, that, that if we would stay focused on the Torah, if we would stay focused on the, the, the instructions that, that have been given us to, to maintain the relationship that we have with God, to operate within that relationship, that, 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 that we have a covenant agreement uh, uh, with God. And, and that agreement is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and your soul. And, and, and then Christ says, and your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Uh, and so, of course, we, uh, as, a, as a form of excuse or making an excuse, uh, we say, who is my neighbor, <laughs> my Lord? And, and so 
One of the definitions for the word neighbor is being immediately adjoined or relatively near. <laughs> immediately adjourned, adjoined or relatively near. Uh, a lot of us, most of us, we, we, we want to think of, of the world that God has created and, and or the creation God has created uh, uh, as sections or categories. Um, okay. Unfortunately, when we think that way, we miss a lot, but I understand uh, um, it, we don't have the capacity to, to, to really understand who God is and, 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 and exactly what he is because uh, uh, he, his thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. So, so I get it, I get it, I get it. But, but today I want to invite you in, into looking at it from God's perspective. Uh, oftentimes we find just like in the parable that, that we look at things from our perspective. Uh, 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 we have a, a finite uh, a view of, of, of the way things should be or what God's intent is when God, his ways are infinite, <laughs> my Lord, <laughs> far beyond ours. And so, 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 so this neighbor uh, uh, in this story is, is, is talking about uh, 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 immediately being adjourned with someone else or with something else. Uh, um, to be in the vicinity uh, uh, nearby uh, uh, a person that maybe you don't even know. And so for us, that, that, because that's hard work, and, and I do understand, that's hard work to, to just reach out and, and help somebody that you don't know. Uh, that, that's difficult for, for us to, 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 to help somebody who, who we might think or say or conclude don't deserve our help because of whatever the reasons are that, that, that got them or put them in that predicament. Whatever the, the, nobody really knows why this man got robbed. Nobody knows because we're living in the 21st century, I'm saying this. Nobody knows whether he was a part of a gang or not and, and he tried to lead the gang so the people's like, oh, we caught him on the road and so we beat him up. We don't know what went on in the scenario and, and all of that is possible, but, but, but there lies the rub, as far as I'm concerned, because, because we have to learn to focus. <laughs> Good God from Zion. And, and, and when we focus on being who God created us to be, and when we focus on the Torah, and no matter what happens, loving the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and all of those excuses, and all of those categories, and all of the stuff that would hinder us from doing that should go out of the window. <laughs> hallelujah. So, so, so Christ is letting them know that, 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 that your neighbor, hallelujah, is whoever you encounter, whoever is immediately close to you, wherever you see a need, wherever the Holy Ghost directs you to go and be a, a of, of, of assistance, we should be willing to do that <laughs> in order to help. In, in order to, to, to be a neighbor, right, we, we have to help a neighbor. And so that neighbor is someone who we may uh, 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 find ourselves just immediately out of nowhere. Because most of the time we don't see it coming. Uh, uh, most of the time we can't predict it. We try. Uh, uh, from time to time we, we try to predict uh, what's going to happen in the course of the day. Uh, we, we really do. We, we hope for the best. Uh, and and we, we do have a list of things. And that's good. That's called planning. And so that, that's okay. Uh, but my question is, what do you do when, when something happens outside of your plans? Uh, when something happens outside of the stringent guidelines that you have for yourself uh, uh, that says that if you do this, this, and this, then you will accomplish this. What happens when, when something unexpected uh, uh, enters into your plans. <laughs> well, well, God is sharing with us in this parable that, 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 that we must have compassion. <laughs> we must have the heart of God. We, we must operate within the guidelines that God has given us. Uh, I don't know how many times you remind yourself, but I remind myself every day that I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. Hallelujah, somebody. Even if I'm a nasty cuss, even if, if, if I'm impolite, even if I get angry and, 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 and I want to act unseemly, I still want to remind myself that I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. So, so if I let my anger lead me into being hateful to people, then, then why am I surprised when hate returns to me? <laughs> why are we surprised when, when we, we ignore folk who we know we can help and we have resources and connections where we can help them? Why are we uh, upset or surprised when we're in trouble and nobody comes to our rescue? <laughs> well, see, God is trying to help us uh, to understand now that, that, that if you act this way, then this is how you're going to be treated. <laughs> if you judge people, then you too shall be judged 
that the same measure you use to drudge other folk. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. And so, so in this parable, we see God is rescuing us. He's, he's helping us. He's, he's letting us know that even in the time that we're living in now, hallelujah, somebody, uh, we have to learn to recognize our neighbor. We need to recognize when God is moving us to help our neighbor. We have to recognize what God is trying to show this world as far as how we should treat each other as fellow humans in this creation. Oh, glory to God. Uh, 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 I don't know about you, but, but, but the more I read about the Lord, the more I learn about his way, the, 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 the more it helps me navigate this crazy world that I live in. And I know I'm not living here alone because you're here with me. And, but we're just seeing it from different perspectives. We're seeing it from different places. And that's the beauty of God. That's, that's the beauty of his ministry. That's the beauty of his word because I don't care how you slice it. I don't care how the circumstances uh, come up or arise or, or who's involved. Hallelujah, somebody. If we would just love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, the Bible declares that, that even when we find ourselves in trouble, even when we find ourselves being tempted beyond that that we can stand, God promised that he would provide a way of escape. You see what I'm saying? So, so when we operate within this diagram or this, 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 this di diagram or this dynamic that God has established, we already have the answers. We already know what the outcome is going to be. Hallelujah, somebody. We already know that God is going to get the glory. <laughs> we already know that when the day comes for him to come back for us, we too shall be glorified with him. Hallelujah, somebody. And so we, we have to learn. We have to know who our neighbor is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, they don't have to look like you. They, they don't have to talk like you or even dress like you. <laughs> They don't have to ride in the same kind of car that you drive in. They, they, they don't have to. Hallelujah, somebody. But they are your neighbors. They don't have to have a lot of money. They could be guilty or not guilty. They, they, they could have deserved to get beat down or their car to break down or they may have made some poor decisions that, that caused them to run out of food or have the lights cut out. But we have to stop using that as an excuse. Hmm. Because I hope I'm helping somebody. I hope I'm helping somebody right here. Because when we, when we refuse to do what God lays on our heart to do, what God leads us to do, we're not just harming them who might have an encounter that will change their whole life. But we're hindering ourselves from growing, from, from, from being detached from materialistic things. We're hindering ourselves from, from maturing to a point to where we're not chasing after those things that are pleasing to the flesh because those things are temporal. They are temporary. But, but, but our heart and our soul long for that that's eternal in the heavens. <laughs> uh, the origin of our very existence uh, is calling us to, 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 to be this great vessel that God has created magnificently and wonderfully made. Hmm. And so when we allow his power now to operate in us, there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. Mm. Hallelujah, somebody. And if God be for us, who, who, can, who, can, who can be against us? And if God is for us, he's more than the whole world against us. Neighbor, your neighbor is waiting for you waiting to hear a word from you, waiting for a helping hand, <laughs> waiting for you to cry for them when they can't cry. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm always on the lookout now for when God, 
wants to use me. And I, I stop worrying about comfort. I, I stop worrying about fully understanding at the moment. But, but I focus on what the Spirit is saying, what the Spirit is leading me to do. The Bible teaches us to try the Spirit by the Spirit, not by the flesh. The flesh is never going to be comfortable. It's never going to be satisfied, my Lord. But the Spirit, when it connects with the will of God, when you're walking in your purpose, when you become that Samaritan, that is the will of God for our lives. That, that, that's what gives glory to our powerful King, to our Master. So, so let us be neighbors. Let, let, us, let us be neighborly. And not as the world would do it, just so you could get something in return. But as God would have us do it, with compassion, with freedom, expecting nothing in return. The only thing we want is our God to be glorified. That's all we need. That's all we live for. I look forward to seeing you, neighbor. God bless you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you again for this opportunity to worship together with each other and with you, with your spirit. Standing on your word, understanding it, implementing your word in our day-to-day -day lives. Hearing the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Be with us now, O oh God. Be with us always. Help us to grow. Help us to implement what we've learned. Help us to be your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Now this time that we've had together has been wonderful, but I must say goodbye. I must say so long until we see each other again, until we come together again. But I hope that you, you, you've heard something today that will inspire you to draw closer to God, to become stronger in his word be a great disciple. Always looking for an opportunity to learn. Always knowing that I have an opportunity to influence someone else to serve. Because this is God's will for his people. God bless you. I love you. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be all majesty, glory, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. And all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Go and serve God with great joy.